Hey everyone, welcome to Quick Tips. Before we get started, just had a quick announcement. We have our Dr. Spotfire live session coming up on July 7th. We're gonna be talking about Python. I know this has been a highly requested topic. We're gonna be doing Python data functions. We're gonna show how to deploy that to the web player. Uh, we'll be using uh, Spotfire 1010, the new long-term support LTS version of Spotfire that was just recently released. So hope you uh, can join us. I'm gonna put the registration link in this video description. Now for today's session, I'm gonna show how to automate data using automation services in Spotfire. And we're doing this every day with our COVID-19 dashboard. If you haven't seen that, I'll again put a link to that in the video description. So every day there's new data coming from different countries, different US counties, different states and provinces, and we need to ingest that and we need to update the dashboard. We also wanna keep that all in sync as best as we can so the dashboard isn't very confusing to use. So you know, rather than looking at all these sources individually, we have some automation for that. And the way I'm gonna show you that is through a couple DXPs first. So diving in, here is a data prep DXP. So we started by actually separating out the ETL process from the actual dashboard DXP. So this DXP is just used to prep data. And what we have is a Postgres database that is actually ingesting this data from the web. And that has some light wrangling and data prep applied to it to get it all consistent across all these different sources, making sure the data lines up, the schema is the same. And then finally, it will generate a final data table. And we take this and we store this data table as an SBDF in the library, and the live dashboard actually captures that SBDF, it references that SBDF. And we did this also so that that SBDF could be used by multiple applications. We have different projects using COVID-19 data that all needed the same type of data. So rather than having to recreate the data prep in different DXPs, we just kind of connect to the SBDF that is already cleaned and prepped and stored in our library every day. Now, we also had issues with data uh, from the sources changing, different um, countries that reported would change their schema, things would be unexpected. So we wanted to have a backup generated as well. So from whatever SBDF is currently in the library, a backup will be generated. So when this automation job runs, it'll grab that SBDF, it'll spit it out with the name backup on it and put it in a special folder. Then it will take the latest data like we had from our Postgres database and do that as a production data. So in our library, we have a backup data folder and a production data folder. And you can see this is all generated by the automation services system account. So this is all generated at the same time. And we also have a backup folder here. So backup data that's all generated. Now, the other thing we did was making a data source checker DXP that would email us an alert with the latest data. We didn't want to have to check the DXP every day and check the dashboard and have to go through the visualizations, make sure it all matches. So instead, what this does is it takes all the data, looks at the maximum date, and then it color codes things that don't match that maximum date. So it can highlight some issues and it'll send us this email. So we just check the email in our day-to-day -day, uh, activities and not have to again go into the dashboard. Now to get started with automation services, you need to have a license for automation services. You can access it in the analyst client. You go to tools, automation services, job builder, and here's where you can create your job. This is the sequence of events that you want to run automated. And within this, you have certain options available to you. So you can open an analysis from the library. You can apply you know, bookmarks. You can export data tables, which we're gonna do. You can export data to files to like CSVs, um, export images, send emails. So a whole sequence of events you wanna do. Now I have in my library a automation job. So this is my generate COVID-19 data. I'll hit open and this is what I've set up. And this is using, it's actually an XML file that's stored on the library. So you can actually save this to your local drive. You can actually manipulate that XML with some other scripting if you want outside of Spotfire to have it triggered different ways. Or you can just use it right from the Spotfire library. So this XML file is saying to open this COVID-19 data prep DXP. The first thing to do is to open that. Then it's going to take this table, this backup table, and it's gonna write it to my backup folder with this name. And it's gonna do that for several tables. You'll see backup as I go down this. It'll do that for several tables, and then it'll switch to production data. So after all the, X, the, the SBDFs have been sent out as backups, then it will open up 
uh, the new data it'll, it'll, within the same DXP, it will access the new data and spit this out as production data SPDFs for the new dashboard uh, to refresh. So, you know, you can go down this, we can see all of the production data going out. And then the final thing it does is it'll open an analysis from the library, which is our data source checker, which you're seeing in the background here. And this data source checker DXP will send an email with some images. So this is the message it will send. This is who it's sending to, the email it's sending from. And here uh, we're gonna include a web link. So if there's any issues, someone can actually click a link in the email and open up this dashboard in the web player and see any issues. It's also gonna attach visualization images. So date check is this visualization. You can just hit add and you can select a visualization in your analysis. You can give it a resolution that you wanna show. Um, you can kind of format some things. And so this is gonna send data, the date check and then each of these individual uh, table visualizations are all gonna get sent out and then it will be done. So here's an example of how that automated email comes out. So this was a few hours ago. Last night, this automated email was triggered and this said the max date was June 22nd and it showed us all of the data. So it was just all, all the dates are pretty good. It looked like Ireland didn't update and then it looked like some of our English county data uh, was still a little bit behind, but overall most of the dashboard data was okay and so it went ahead and did the automation. So how do you schedule these jobs to run? Now, if you're in the web client and you have access to automation services, you have that license, you'll see this option for automation services and you can schedule jobs here. You can also run jobs, edit jobs, delete jobs, enable, disable. There's different actions you can do for these scheduled jobs. So this is the only scheduled job we have right now. And this is something where um, this has taken that job that we were just talking about uh, in the analyst. I had saved that to the library and in my COVID-19, we have these different jobs. So I've selected this job and I can choose what time of day I want this to run. I can create new schedules right here. It's very straightforward. You got the days of the week, you got the time you can set up, the time zone, things of that nature, and then you can save it. You can also see the job activity and the job history. You can see when these things were triggered. So that's an overview of how automation services works. We use it today with updating data for COVID, but it can also be used for all sorts of other things. You can have it export a PDF to your boss on a regular schedule. You can generate different reports. It can actually summarize the, the latest data in the dashboard and give you and your team a whole updated report. It can open an analysis. It can run data functions and then resave the analysis so that when users come into the analysis, it's not having to run the data functions. Uh, right off the bat, it can load a lot faster. Lots of different things you can do with automation services, but again, just a preview today. Hope you enjoyed this session. Make sure you join us next time and make sure you subscribe to the channel to continue getting more quick tips.